Welcome to this short introduction into why raw materials are important and how they can play a key role for transitioning to a more sustainable, clean, green and circular society. My name is Patrick Nadal. I'm the Senior Advisor for Exploration and Resource Assessment at EIT Raw Materials. EIT stands for European Institute for Innovation and Technology, an independent body of the EU that was set up in 2008 to boost innovation and entrepreneurship across Europe. EIT Raw Materials is one of the many knowledge and innovation communities under the umbrella of EIT and is the largest consortium in the raw materials sector worldwide. EIT Raw Materials' vision is to develop raw materials into a major strength for Europe. Before going into detail about why raw materials are important, we have to first outline how we define them. Water, food, timber can all be considered as raw materials, but we at EIT Raw Materials focus on minerals and metals. There's a saying that if you can't grow it, you need to mine it. Although this is a simplification, this saying definitely makes a strong point. Of course, we have to add that luckily nowadays we can also recycle many materials. I will come back to this important aspect later in my presentation. Okay, so why are raw materials, in other words, minerals and metals so important for our society and economy? We have always used raw materials, starting in prehistoric times with flintstones that were used as tools and weapons. Over the last centuries, we have been using more and more minerals and elements in everything we use, from everyday products, cars, and machines to high-tech applications. By now, we are using almost the entire periodic table of elements, and modern technology demands more raw materials than ever before in history. By the way, can you name all the elements on this graph? To give you a better idea of what raw materials are needed to produce some modern day products, here are some examples. Probably all of you have a smartphone, but do you know what elements are needed to produce a modern smartphone or a wind turbine? Equally, electric cars or commercial buildings require a large number of raw materials. Could you have named any of them? So I hope these illustrations helped you to see the many applications of raw materials. In fact, raw materials and advanced materials are the key enablers for the transition in the energy and mobility sectors. They are crucial for the transition from a brown economy to a green economy. To be able to achieve this fundamental shift in the resource basis of our society, we need to supply sustainably sourced raw materials. This fundamental shift can seem quite abstract. How does this affect you or me? Well, this graphic shows examples of the 3.1 million pounds of minerals, metals, and fuels that, in this case, the average American will need in their lifetime. Calculations are based on a life expectancy of 78.6 years, and the mineral use data comes from the National Mining Association, the U.S. Geological Survey, and the U.S. Energy Information Administration. The numbers you can see here are probably quite similar for an average European and it really exemplifies how important raw materials are for each one of us and how we can be part of the fundamental shift to a more sustainable, clean and green society. I promise you I would come back to the recycling aspect. Although we have made huge steps towards improving recycling rates, they are currently still only sitting at 0 to 30% depending on the raw material and the complexity of the product that has to be recycled. If we look at the periodic table of elements and plot the current recycling rates, on top we can see that for many elements, these rates are still quite low. And for many high-tech elements, such as the rare earth elements, they are less than 1%. 
This means that we need to mine those materials to ensure a supply. Have you heard of the term critical raw materials before? These are minerals, metals, and other raw materials that are considered critical. Every few years, the European Commission creates a panel to discuss which elements should be on this list. Critical in this context means that these elements are not abundantly available or that they are mined in politically unstable countries or under otherwise unsustainable conditions. This pie graph uh, on the right shows you the current distribution of suppliers of critical raw materials worldwide. As you can see, China is dominating the supply. European sources only account for circa 9% and are not nearly covering the demand of European markets, which means we have to import most of our raw materials from overseas. Is this sustainable? When you look at the graph on the right, you can see that only 34.1% of global raw material supplies come from politically stable or fair countries. At the same time, we can see on the left that Europe is the only region worldwide with declining production rates in the period between 2000 and 2017. Again, do you think that is sustainable? We at EIT Raw Materials are following our vision to develop raw materials into a major strength for Europe. This effort will help to transition to a more sustainable and clean and green society. I hope you learned one or two things about raw materials and why they matter. Thank you for your attention and we'd love to hear from you.